Welcome to the world's number one fitness business podcast for health club owners, gym managers, and fitness entrepreneurs. As always, this will be a great show as we have another expert to help your fitness business and your career. We'd like to thank our premier sponsor, Active Management, for supporting us. And we highly recommend becoming a member of Active Management to strengthen your business in 2016. There are loads of resources members receive, so join the Active Tribe today at www.activemgmt.com.au. Now that's enough from me. Let's welcome the show's amazing host, Chantal. What's on this week's show? Thanks, Harper, and welcome everyone to the show. This week, I'm joined by Vicki Saunders, an athlete sponsorship expert and the owner of the Sponsorship Consultants. During the show, we talk about what it is that a sponsorship consultant actually does, how you can partner with other businesses to gain sponsorship for your brand or, say, for an in-club challenge, plus steps to fostering relationships and building the network around your business. Now talking of sponsors, I want to say a big shout out to our fantastic sponsor, Tribe Team Training, the complete small group training business system that is helping clubs make more money without having to sell more memberships. To find out more information about Tribe, just head over to their website at tribeteamtraining.com. And also don't forget that it is your last week to claim your free gift from Active Management. Make sure you stay tuned right to the end of the show to hear what it is that you need to do. This month, we have an awesome prize for people who subscribe to the show notes at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com or engage with the Fitness Business Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or even emailing us. Do it and you may be this month's winner. Now it's time for this week's guest. Vicki Saunders is an athlete sponsorship expert and her company is called the Sponsorship Consultants. Vicki is fast becoming the world's leading expert in athlete sponsorship. She empowers individuals and organizations with the knowledge and skills to create and manage valuable, effective and sustainable sponsorship. Her work has been commissioned by the International Olympic Committee and her clients include the Australian Institute of Sport, Team GB, Deloitte and many individual athletes, as well as local and global companies who sponsor athletes. Welcome to the show, Vicky. Thanks so much. I don't know if you can hear, but my dogs have decided to start barking in the background. (laughs) Perfect timing just as well to start our interview. But I'm pretty, sure, I'm pretty sure our tribe know my dogs by now, two very big, very loud Rhodesian Ridgebacks. So I apologise, everyone. Let's get on with the show. <laughs> Vicky, let me ask you this. Are you ready to fit fire our global tribe of fitness business owners and managers today? Yes, I am. And are you ready to overload them with pearls of wisdom, strategies for success and tips to make them better leaders and business people? Absolutely. Let's get stuck into it. So tell us this, you have achieved a lot and you've got your business that you're running. I mean, along that that way to achieving what you've got and, and getting as far as you have in your career, have there been any roadblocks along the way? Yeah, probably weekly, if not daily. <laughs> and they usually involve me. I'm the roadblock. <laughs> and I, I really find that more often than not, those, what feels like a bit of a breakdown Um, either if it's a breakdown in communications or a personal, you know, emotional breakdown, like it's all too hard. It's actually a breakthrough. You know, if we push through that, amazing stuff happens. It forces us to do something different. So I kind of welcome those roadblocks a little bit more these days. I like that. Are you open-minded to the roadblock? Yeah, bring them on. (laughs) Now, Vicky, I mentioned in your introduction that you're a sponsorship consultant. So can you explain to us what exactly does that mean? Yeah. And look, it's really interesting. As you were explaining that, I thought, you know, we're talking about partnerships today. And I thought, I hope people don't get confused because they're kind of the same thing. Um, And what I do is I basically teach individuals and organizations how to identify the value they can offer and go and connect with other individuals or organizations in, in a partnership. So that could be sponsorship of athletes or it could be business partnerships, but it's all about helping people to to connect with uh, opportunities around them. Okay, so specifically when we're talking about fitness business owners, do you want to put that into perspective of how this is going to be really relevant for them? Yeah, absolutely. So I think one of the most effective things I've seen facility owners and trainers do over the years is connect with other businesses or people to help them have more capacity to deliver 
something of value to their customers or to tap into a new network or to in some way come together to achieve something that they couldn't have done by themselves. That's a, that's a great um, description, Vicky. So just before you mentioned you said sponsorship and partnerships are, are quite similar, do you want to explain to us a bit more about, I guess, the similarities and the differences between the two? Yeah, I think the similarities are greater than the difference. Um, people perceive sponsorship as being one person's the recipient and one person's contributing. So it's like an athlete being sponsored by a company or an event being sponsored by a business Really, sponsorship is not about one receiving and one giving. That's charity. That's donations. Partnerships and sponsorships are all about mutual contribution for mutual benefit. So we can say partnership, we can say sponsorship, but functionally it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. So if we were to look at fitness businesses these days, quite a lot of um, gyms and clubs are going through these like body transformation challenges and stuff like that. Do you reckon we could use that maybe as a bit of a case study and you could explain to us how uh, a fitness business might be able to partner with other businesses to perhaps say build a prize pool or help them with giveaways for a competition? Yeah, absolutely. Do you know, it's funny. I love those challenges. I love watching them because you know that that person has got much more than just a rocking bod. They've actually changed so many things in their lives and what an amazing achievement. Now, I know a little bit about training. I'm not an expert, but I'm, I'm more the end user. And I know that when you're going through that kind of transformation, it's not just going to the gym. It's what you're eating. It's what you're doing the rest of the time. Maybe you're buying some new clothes. Maybe you've now decided to participate in some um, activities, like maybe go and do an obstacle race or, you know, a Spartan race or something like that. So there's a whole heap of stuff around that. So if you think about it as a, as a gym owner, how can you capture that consumer behavior in what you're offering? So if you know that someone's going to be changing their body and changing their image What else can you package up into that offering that's going to give them a greater experience? So maybe you could um, partner with a nutritionist. Maybe they're going to need some physio. So you have some, you know, partnership with a a physio company. Then we start looking at a little bit more creatively. They probably are going to want to have some gorgeous photos taken at the end. So maybe you could also partner up with a, a company that does photography and makeovers and things like that. So when it comes time to selling this this body transformation, it's not just about them coming to the gym and lifting weights. You're actually offering them an incredible experience and with that comes a much higher price tag. Um, you know, if you can be bringing more people into your um, facility doing this kind of transformation um, and, and offering them some amazing experience, you know, word's going to get around. So, I think as a marketing exercise, these kinds of partnerships are incredibly powerful. You're also connecting into their networks. So it's not just what you're offering to the current clients that you've got. It's that you're now connecting with a whole heap of other networks and together you can create something really valuable. Vicky, I think that all sounds fantastic. Can we talk though about the actions that are involved, the steps that are really involved? Because I think that's where I guess we quite often find ourselves with a bit of a hurdle and and that is, you know, we've got the idea to partner with these other great companies, but what do we do? What are the steps that we take to actually get our foot in the door and strike up the conversation about the partnership? Yeah. Well, I think underpinning that has to be um, having a good network. Now, if you don't have a network and you don't like the sound of the word network, Bad luck. (laughs) It's actually really fun. It's actually conversations and you can start those today. It's about, you know, really connecting with other people and businesses at events or online and just being that, you know, that nice, interesting, engaged, supportive person. So that underpins the process. Now, really, if you're looking at doing partnerships, you need to know why, because that's going to help you decide what partnerships you do and what kind of activities you guys do together. So, having a look at what your business objectives are for the next 12 to 24 months is going to be the best starting point for you. Have a look at um, your target market, the demographic, the kind of things that they might be wanting and what you can offer them at the moment and really start to piece together all those puzzle pieces. You know, what do we want? What have we got to offer? 
what do our target market want and how do we come up with some really great offerings to them and how can we maybe achieve some of our other business goals through these these connections with partners maybe you know you could partner with some kind of corporate organization and go in and deliver some corporate fitness sessions so whatever it is that your business objectives are I'm pretty sure that partnerships some way or another are going to be able to help you get there quicker and easier and more effectively. So the the basic steps, establish your business objectives, have a look at, you know, what's already going on in your facility and then start having those conversations. It's really about going in with an offer and an idea of what it might be but not having all the answers. Just start those conversations going with your potential partners. And Vicky, you mentioned the importance of networking and creating those relationships. When you make that initial approach, do you suggest that the first approach is picking up the phone or speaking to someone with a verbal approach, or do you suggest that it's a written proposal outline that you're approaching them with? Yeah. Look, I my experience has always been to get as close to belly to belly as possible. You know, face to face is great. Over the phone or Skype's okay. It's good. Uh, an email, I think you're probably avoiding something if, we, if we're honest. You're either avoiding taking the time or taking the effort. Um, if it makes you feel uncomfortable, you know, because it's a bit scary picking up the phone, that's okay. Everyone has that. But know that you're not actually asking for anything. You're going in to offer something. You might even know, you might not know exactly what that is yet, but you know in your mind that this is about creating something awesome together. So, feel confident in in making those you know, initial conversations. That's really great advice. Thank you, Vicky. Now, I know if we were to kind of flip the coin, quite often gym owners, gym managers get asked to sponsor maybe local sporting teams or sometimes sporting individuals. If our tribe are being approached by those those type of people, what do you recommend that they would actually put in an agreement if they did want to take on sponsoring a team or a club or, or an individual sports person? Yeah, we go back to that really simple process again, which mm-hmm. is identifying what the business objectives are. Um, but we then also look at what your marketing activities are as a business. What are you already doing? And listing those out, what are all the things that you're planning on doing in the next 12 months to promote your business, to achieve your business objectives? And next to each one of those, ask yourself the question, how could an athlete or a team help me do this in a way that's going to make it easier, quicker, quicker? more effective, less costly, more fun, you know, all the things that we want from, you know, business. And if the person that's approaching you for sponsorship can help you with those activities, great. That's what you put into the contract with them. You know, you have a a fairly simple and clear list of all of the activities that they're required to do um, over the length of the relationship you have with them. And look, it might be a bit of trial and error. Some things will work, some things not so much. And they might bring some really great ideas to the table. And I'd always encourage businesses to ask the athlete or the the club that they're going to be sponsoring what their ideas are. How are they going to help that business achieve their objectives? Because at the the end of the day, that's what sponsorship is all about. It's about um, being a commercial relationship. It's not a donation So getting creative but always coming back to your business goals is going to set you in a good stead for the relationship. Really good advice. So while we're talking kind of in that that realm, a few shows back, JT from Active Management talked about SIPs, which he said were socially important people. It was back in show 48. And they are effectively, if anyone missed that show, they're effectively people that have like large followings on social media platforms. So, Vicky, my question to you is this. What would you suggest that we do if we wanted to attract those SIPs um, to to partner with us in our businesses? Well, I'm not sure if this is the answer that you were hoping for, but I would actually ask you the question if you were thinking of doing that. Like if you said, look, I'm a a Sydney-based gym, Mm -hmm. we've got a really great local community that we're engaged with and we've got access to Kelly Slater, he's happy for us to, you know, put his face up as our ambassador and we're going to, we're going to sponsor him. I would question that because that's going to cost you a lot of money. And I'm not sure that a huge global influencer like him is actually going to really help with your local community. So it's very tempting. It's very, 
you, know, you think it might solve all of your marketing problems, having someone who's got a huge network. But if their network's all overseas, that's not necessarily going to help your local business. It might look good, and I get that that's in itself quite powerful. But if it's their network that you're after, make sure that their network's actually relevant to your target market, or you might just be wasting your money. We definitely don't want to waste money. So really the key is to ensure that the person that you approach is relevant to your target market first and foremost. Vicky, earlier we touched on athlete and team sponsorship. Is there a way that we can determine how much we should actually be paying? Is there a formula for that kind of calculation? Yeah, it is a tricky one. Yeah. Um, there's quite a few calculations that I use with my clients mm-hmm. and there's no right or wrong. There's no one answer. But I think initially you've got to really look at what can I afford as a business because it falls into your marketing budget. So if it's $2,000 or $5,000, then look at how you can guarantee you're going to get that back in some sort of value. It may not be in currency. It may be in achieving some of your business objectives that don't have a dollar value directly attached. So you might say, look, uh, we really want to get 5,000 more likes on our Facebook page in the next three months. And we also are going to be doing some community events or some expos where we need to have someone else at the booth with us doing some activations. Mm -hmm. And so you start thinking, okay, that might cost us, you know, so much in bringing staff or whatever it might be, or how much it might be to increase your Facebook likes through organic growth. So you start to kind of look at the marketing expenses that you're avoiding through having an athlete. And you you can look at it that way. One of the clients I work with just sponsored an athlete and um, got him to go out to a school that they they do a lot of school visits. They're a swimming school themselves. Mm -hmm. And the cost of his sponsorship was covered in his first school visit. So they got 25 new uh, customers signing up and that uh, covered his sponsorship costs for the year. So if you can come up with some ways to actually get your money back and then add all the other stuff in, that's great. But look, at the end of the day, I think it's really about the conversation you have with them and you you know, you know, come up with the figure together and you, you discuss it. You know, negotiating is a beautiful thing. It's a conversation where you're trying to find a common solution or, you know, a, a common ground. It's not about arguing or, you know, slamming your fist on the desk and getting your way. So I think negotiating it and, and working out what you both feel is fair. It's probably the the best advice I could give on that. That's a really great example actually about the swimming because it kind of makes it realistic as to what what we could do because I guess at the end of the day it doesn't need to be a huge big name celebrity as you you mentioned when we're talking about SIPs. I mean it needs to be someone that's relevant to your brand and relevant to the community that you're trying to appeal to. I'm trying to yeah, preach. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I'm just going to add to that though, that if your community is online, then yes, a SIP could be really relevant. I just thought I'd throw that back in there. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. you're selling. So for, I guess, our tribe members that have online personal training packages or eBooks, online programs, which a lot of people do these days. Um, yeah. You're right, Vicky, that's, that's when the SIP could be a good association for them. Yeah. And really you need to make them love you. Otherwise, you know, you you want them to truly love what you're doing, not just be doing it for the money. So that's something you need to really be careful about that you don't filter your message down by just having someone who's happy to represent any old brand. Yeah, that's that's an interesting thing. So you're saying make sure that whoever that personality is truly does believe in what it is that you're selling and they're not just doing it for the sake of it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Good advice. Um, Vicky, to finish off today, do you want to leave us with your very best fit bizpiration and tell us your top three tips for fitness business owners to recruit partners for their in-house events? Absolutely. So the first one, and I'm going to repeat myself, it is identifying your business objectives because if you miss that really simple step, everything you do isn't going to have that uh, sense of purpose and, and guidance of coming back to you know why you exist as a business. The second thing, it's a quote from a guy called John Burroughs, who's an American essayist, and it's the lesson which life repeats and constantly enforces is look underfoot. The great opportunity is where you are. So sometimes the best opportunities are staring us in the face, like, you know, a gym being located next to a, you know, a cafe or a, you know, a meal delivery service. What a great combination. 
The third thing is think really creatively. You know, I my whole life I've, I've thought creatively and I thought it was a flaw. I thought there was something wrong with me for not fitting in. But I promise you the coolest stuff comes when you come up with a crazy idea and you go, hmm, maybe I will just explore that further. And that's when the cool stuff happens. So think creatively, bring it back to your business goals and look around you and, and find the opportunities that already exist around you. Vicky, thank you so much for joining us today. I think you've really um, shed some good light on on the topic around, you know, uh, sponsorships and partnerships. And I want to thank you so much for sharing your experience and your expertise with us. We're going to leave your contact details in this week's show notes. So if anyone wants to get in contact with Vicky and have a chat to her more about any sponsorship or partnership ideas that you might have, I'm sure that Vicky will be able to help you. So thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Thank you so much, Chantelle. It was really fun, actually. I enjoyed that. Excellent. (laughs) The Fitness Business Podcast is very appreciative of our podcast partners. Here's a quick word from one of our partners. As you know, our goal at the Fitness Business Podcast is to help you grow your fitness business. So I love it when I can tell you about new products, programs, and solutions to help you do just that. Our show would not be possible without the support of our sponsors. And one of those awesome sponsors is Visual Fitness Planner. But before I tell you more about them, let me ask you these questions. What is your membership closing percentages? What percentage of your members at the point of sale sign up for a complimentary orientation session? What percentage of your new members actually show up for their complimentary orientation session? And most importantly, what percentage of your membership buys personal training? These are the numbers that you have to be asking yourself and measuring every single day. As the old saying goes, if you're not measuring your numbers, you're not managing your numbers. A club set show close numbers are significantly improved because of the visual fitness planner. The VFP provides a turnkey system for marketing, capturing, and integrating new members into a healthy lifestyle change. The VFP automates your existing sales, marketing, and orientation systems with the power of its visually impacting technology. VFP calculates a person's health risks for diseases, it predicts their health age, it creates a before and after 3D image of their body and calculates how long it will take to achieve their goals. And in this process, increases your membership and personal training sales and overall member retention. To check out more about the VFP, head over to their website at myvfp.com.au. And of course, a copy of that website link is in today's show notes. It's time for the Fitness Business Podcast Wrap. Here are my top takeaways from this week's show. Vicky said that partnerships and sponsorships are all about mutual contribution for mutual effort. She said face-to-face contact is great, over the phone or Skype is okay, but emailing is a no-no. Remember, you're not asking for something, you're creating something awesome together. Negotiation is about having a conversation where you are trying to find a common solution. And she said that some of the best opportunities are staring us in the face. Think about what is close to you and you might be surprised with what you find. Tribe to celebrate our first birthday, our wonderful friends at Active Management are giving everyone a free business resource download valued at $100. To get your gift, head over to fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. You can choose from one of four resources. Don't miss out. Jump on today. It's fitnessbusinesspodcast.com forward slash active. Quickfire 5. Okay, Tribe, it is my absolute pleasure to introduce you to next week's guest. It is Sean Greeley, the president and CEO of Net Profit Explosion. Welcome to the show, Sean. Hey, thanks. Great to be here. Now, are you ready for our quick fire five questions? I'm ready. Fire away. Okay, let's do it. Why do you do what you do? I love to empower entrepreneurs. At my company, we are all about helping entrepreneurs grow and growing companies. And that just fires us up to support people who want to make something happen. And what's the best piece of advice that you've ever received? Best piece of advice, especially when it comes to entrepreneurial life and business ownership is to not give up. You're going to continually face challenges 
that will stretch your comfort zone uncomfortably so and just don't give up you know there's there's tons of help there's tons of support from people who've been through whatever you're dealing with and tackling a challenge or growing to the next level in your business uh and to to you know ask for help uh and uh and just keep keep going uh it's really it's the name of the game if you don't you don't quit you can never lose what's a personal habit that helps you become better at what you do Personal habit for sure is having a coach. Uh, I have a coach. I've always had a coach. I've had a number of different uh, experts and consulted. I've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars in <laughs> for the last decade. And I believe, you know, if you're gonna if you're gonna sell it, you should buy it. Uh, otherwise, you're a hypocrite. So I invest a lot with people who are uh, been through the things that I'm working on and can offer great advice and support in navigating them quickly. Sean, what's one book that you'd recommend and why? Yeah, great book I just finished up that I shared with my uh, executive team at MP is called, uh, and a lot of clients actually, I gave it to a bunch of my top clients, uh, it's called Straight Line Leadership. And it's a, it's a great book really for how to think effectively with yourself uh, and in working with others. Uh, and and that, is the, that is ultimately what it's all about is the way you think affects the way you behave and the way you interact. Uh, and uh, it's just got full of, of tools. Uh, that I can't recommend strongly enough. Okay, we might grab that information, grab that book and put it in this week's show notes for the tribe to check out. And why should our tribe come back next week and listen to your main interview? Yeah, whatever, wherever you're at, if you own a fitness business, whether you're just starting out or you've got you know a team of 40, 50 people, multiple locations, you know, I've spent the last 10 years working with over 21,000 clients in 95 countries with MPE, uh, and uh, we've developed some great systems and tools to help entrepreneurs grow in the fitness industry. So look forward to sharing them and getting into it. Well, that's a good enough reason for me. I look forward to welcoming you back next week. Thanks, Sean. You got it. Tribe, Sean is an absolute legend, and I can't wait to share that interview with you all next week. Thanks for joining me for another week of the Fitness Business Podcast. And remember, what you leave behind is not what's engraved in stone monuments, but what is woven into the lives of others. Great show this week that you should be suffering DLMs, delayed onset mind soreness, as you are overloaded and that's when your mind is strengthened. You and your business have been strengthened thanks to the amazing support of our premier sponsor, Active Management. Check out www.activemgmt.com.au only if you want to strengthen your business and your leadership. Don't forget all today's links and notes are found at www.fitnessbusinesspodcast.com where you can also subscribe and never miss a show and maybe win a prize. Next week is another incredible guest with Chantal, so get ready for more fit bizpiration. Fitness.